Thank you, Ayo. We'll be speaking with uh, Senator Adams Oshomole, the man who wears many hats. Uh, we, 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 he's one of those who sort of predicted this. First of all, welcome to the show, uh, Senator Oshomole. I started, off, me. I started off saying that you predicted this because a day before the protest, you said it is not possible that you would have a peaceful protest for 10 days and say it wouldn't go uh, out of hand. On day one, it went out of hand. Is this your, I, I, I told you so moment? Yeah, I think it's a basic uh, issue in sociology. Uh, I, I did give reasons. I said, when you have an armor force group unstructured, with no clear defined leadership and a clear mandate, and it's not accountable to anyone, informal leaders emerge. Those can necessarily lead to violence because they have no control. Who are they going to talk to? Who makes you our spokesman? Who makes you our leader? Mm. Because the system, is, the protesters are not structured. Therefore, it's an armor force group. This is where said to, it's not about literacy or illiteracy. That is the nature of informal groups. The second is what I saw then, and between yesterday and today, I'm confused as to, I mean, day before yesterday and yesterday, uh, I see different voices as to what the issues are. Some talk about things, when I, I, I spoke at that time, what I heard was some people saying they want to reclaim Nigeria. And I said, is Nigeria under foreign occupation? Nigeria is under Nigeria government. We are not under foreign occupation. And therefore, you can't talk about reclaiming. Uh, I think there was someone who said, they don't want the outcome of the 2023 election and all that. There were so many voices. And I said, the summary of the 10 demand that we read out in different, since we don't know who is who in social media, we saw that for me, I summarized them to me. Some people, some people, they are not probably the one you see on the street. They want regime change. And I said, you cannot peacefully demand that because the constitution forbid you to make demands that cannot, that are unlawful within the position of the constitution. The only legitimate way for those who lost, who lost election is that they must, as of, as of necessity, order the constitution away for the next round of elections. Until then, there is nothing they can do. Senator, if they sit to short circuit the system, there will be a problem. Senator, and do you honestly, I said, do you honestly believe... One should begin to see the voices of two major defeated presidential candidates backing a protest, including those who used to lecture me about hoodlum, quote, take hijacking process, now protest, now talking about uh, the right of people to protest. But they didn't emphasize the responsibility. I knew clearly. That whereas there is genuine hunger, whereas there is genuine level of unacceptable level of unemployment, whereas there is obviously genuine frustrations in the land, the middle class is also agonizing. There's no question about that. The real people behind this are not motivated by the fact of those hunger. They are just being politically opportunistic because they know they deserve having been in government that in 12 months, there is no magical relief in terms of structured changes, structured changes. Looking at the reality of life that between when you conceptualize a policy, announce the policy, seek to implement it before the benefit manifests, the period of the nature of the policy is not a matter for 12 months. Senator, you led some of the most iconic protests yes. in this country when yeah. you were NLC chair. The, you, you, you took the words from my mouth when you mentioned you know, the fact that there's actual poverty in the land. That ventilation, the space to ventilate, organized or not, properly done or not, don't you think that that space to ventilate should be there 
not the political conversations about it, not who is sponsoring what, what motivations are here, the ventilation of the frustration of the Nigerian. Let Don't me, you think, let, whether let, organized or not, they should be allowed to do that? Let me tell you one of the other sociological facts that I, I try to understand the world of work. I studied it so that I can, I was well equipped to be able to lead workers and working families. One of the benefits of a peaceful protest, including a strike action, is that it has what the social, industrial sociologists call cathetic effect. It cleanses away, you know, it's like when you share tears in mm. pain. Relief. You have a sense of relief. Mm. Even though, for example, you lost a loved one and you cried uncontrollably, when you recover, the man may not come back to life. But you have done what is human. Nobody is more committed to the right of freedom of association and freedom of protest. Because I defended those rights. I led those protests. I led from the front. I do remember that at the federal secretariat, a commissioner of police, they aghast me. They came even up to NSU's office. The guy who was eventually charged for the ACO 8 killings mm. threatened to shoot at me in front of NSC secretariat. And uh, in one of the protests, police were used to kill many of our members. Uh, we protested to the National Assembly. The right to protest is not negotiable. I even say it is not even a constitutional matter. You, did you, it's one of those God given inalienable rights. Uh, the Senator, did you, however, did you, Senator, however, just one second. Did you, did no, you no, condemn, I must land because no, otherwise. No, no. Do, you you condemn, do you condemn being tear No, no, no. At I'm not going to cut short. I must make sense with. Because that's how you edited me out of context. This is live TV. Uh, yes, that is why I need to be very clear. This is the area you cannot edit me to suit your interest. <laughs> I must take responsibility for what I'm going to say. Okay, go on. And it's not to suit you, it's to suit my conscience. And I want to be responsible for my views. Now, in exercising those rights, there are responsibilities that goes with it. If you... The issue is not about whether you have the right to strike. You have the right to protest, yes. But you must also understand, particularly when you are protesting against hunger, which everybody can see, right? You must also be careful not to complicate the conditions of the poor. And in that comment, I said, if the faceless organizers are not careful, they will put the poorest of the poor who are already on the floor, they put them unwittingly inside the grave. Now, from China's report, I saw poor people show being looted. Mm. Are those poor people really responsible for the hunger? Are they responsible for unemployment? They are not. They are also people who have tried, it's part of the challenges, to set up what we call small, micro to medium scale businesses. You shut them down. Mm. And now, I can bet you, the aftermath, when you do your audit, you will see that the poor, the segment of them will become poorer for some time. Yeah, Those were medical science. Okay, so can we... Can we so can the we... right to protest is legitimate. Yeah. It's not a matter of real constitution. Senator, please. Even let's, God uh, granted us that right. Senator, we... As we, my children, as in my place, Senator we born second, if child, as if he doesn't cry, Senator Shomole, as yeah. moderators, we need to work with the time. That's so right. Please bear with us. You talked about being tear gassed when you protested at the time. Is that something you condemn? And when you look at what happened now where peaceful protesters were tear gassed, I'll use Abuja, for example, because we had reporters there, even journalists who went through the same thing. Do you condemn it as well? I don't know how best you want me to say it. I did not tell you that I celebrated being tear gassed. But because I was, I decided to lead from the front I was ready to take all the resistance because the state, this government of uh, President Tinubu is extremely civil, truly civil. And I saw the police, IG, speaking the way he spoke, 
I didn't see much threat. If I play back all the then IG, when the president then, remember Dugbe who said, look at Oshomole, he doesn't have armed forces. He's threatening the president who is the commander in chief. <laughs> he emphasized that he command the armed forces. And then when I met him, he told me the president had told the armed forces, anybody who come out should be shut down. This president has not said that. And the police that I saw, because it depends, you have to pick and choose what appealed to you. At what point should you stop? Is it after the destruction or to prevent destruction? Is there anywhere in the world where you have to see protests be resisted by police? It is an uncomfortable responsibility they have to take. But when I was uh, leading workers, when they tear gas us, we sometimes have the attitude, we throw the tear gas back. Mm. But it is not about how the police respond now. But in totality, Ikumi, I can tell you, this IG or the police order this IG, in my view, I'll be quite civil in its language. So, so I saw police. So you don't condemn. Wait, 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 wait. So I you don't condemn the tear gassing of peaceful protesters. Notice that there's a clear difference between hoodlums, rioters, and peaceful protesters. Okay. You want me to say, I do not like anything that will break hardship including tear gas. No. However, I do recognize that because the system is not structured, even if it were structured, if police believe that you are going to destroy or kill someone, they might have to resort to those methods. There, any protester must be that we call it struggle. The struggle is not, not a tea party. So I, of course, will not celebrate that. But I saw for the first time, which I never enjoyed as NSV president, thanks to social media, I mm. saw a commissioner of police in one state to procure not tear gas, but water to support, to give to those who were protesting peacefully. I mean, so why you, you point at the action in some areas, the details of which you may not know, mm. You also have to acknowledge that the police, in some other places, we saw them smiling and engaging in conversation, even in Lagos. I want to be able to even get your thoughts. It's interesting that you brought up the sociological aspect of a lot of these scenarios being played out. And it's, there's a question, and it's a sociological question. Do protests work in Nigeria? They have. They work. In what ways? Which one would you say afterwards changed policy, made us a lot better as a people? The issue about protest is that it's not a substitute to be in charge. You are just putting pressure on policymakers. Now, one of the convictions, for example, NLC uh, went on a protest. And the governors were saying the cat will pay more than 48000 then they shifted to 50,000. In the end, both NSC and government, NSC come down to 70, the governor said they can't pay, and President Bola met Tinubu after wider consultation and looking at numbers was convinced that a 70,000 minimum was realistic. And not by decree, he persuaded the governor to understand that Human welfare is the primary purpose of government. And like I also said in a former interview here, even that minimum is not meant for responsible employer. Let me use that word. Because it is meant to protect people who don't have the power to organize, who do not belong to strong unions, and who, who are not even members of a union because of their numbers. And so you make the states has responsibility to create that social safety net so that you don't brutalize people because they are so powerless mm. with hunger. So now, the president has done that. And he sent it to the National Assembly. And without any alteration, the National Assembly endorsed it because that was a consensus between the NLC and the government, the federal government, okay. the state, not just that, and the private sector employers. Mm. But the good news is that many segments of the major employers were already paying as much as 70, mm -hmm. some even higher. 
I expect those ones to even further increase. Just like it was done when I was sent as the president, the law was 5,500, mm. but we got a bunch of just federal government to pay 7,500. Mm. We also said all the oil producing states should pay 7,500 because the cost of living in those states is higher. And ironically, price of fuel in some oil producing states is higher than you find in, 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 uh, in Abuja. Mm. And we also add Lagos to the basket yeah. on account of the challenges of Lagos population, etc. Okay. Uh, so I see expect that those are things that the trade unions are supposed to do. But the question I would like to ask, so that I'm very clear about how I respond, you have had the benefit of interviewing uh, several people both those leading protests in the different parts and also analysts. What specifically are the demands? Beautiful. Mm. Now, here's where I'm coming to you on this because yeah. you started your opening statement by saying that you've gone through the demands of the protesters and it suggests that all they want is a regime change and the people who lost the elections uh, are backing them. And these are, these are the kinds of statements that some of the protesters believe have fueled the protest. They believe that government officials have been careless with their words from threatening them to downplaying the situation in the country. You also allude to the fact that the, there's, there are a lot of things wrong, hunger, unemployment, and all of that. I've gone through the, the demands of the protesters. I don't know if we have the same, but perhaps you could point us to what you think in all these demands, suggest a regime change. And the reason is this. No, no, just so hold that, up there. Just so one that, second. You, a common understanding. But even you have said you've gone through the demands. Now, I no, assume no, 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 you no. know I the demands. Before. So based on the demands... The, wait, wait. At the time I spoke, I spoke to what I heard. We're trying not to politicize the situation so because... So tell me what the demands are. I mean, exists. you have... But you had the demands, Honorable uh, Senator Shomale. Excuse me. Nobody has addressed a demand to me. Okay, let's assume that... Not assume, let's talk factual. No, we're being factual. You started yeah, the conversation the, by saying you that you had the least opportunity and it suggested to regime to change. Change. I said before, this is what I heard. But Has it changed? Over the past, no, no. I have seen, for example, a young guy in Plateau speaking very, very eloquently and dispassionately about why he and his people in Nasarawa State, are uh, participating. And you can't fault any of the things he said. You talk about hunger, you can't fault it. You talk about unemployment, you can't fault it. He talks about insecurity, you can't fault it. Right? Now, but I have also heard, even this morning watching your TV, someone who rolled out some demand, which include a repeal of the 2029 or 1999 constitution. Mm -hmm. So I saw some other thing with that young man in the capture. I also saw somebody very responsible in the sense that the face is known. It's a, it's a prophet in Joss. Not that he's one of those who did this by social media. He assumed leadership to fill the vacuum to be able to talk to the demonstration. And I was very impressed. Last night, I think it was, it was on, on your 7 o'clock uh, policy today with uh, Sheo. And the man from Joss speaks so responsibly about issues that obviously are negotiable. Okay. Right? And he emphasized, he emphasized that President Tinubu has opportunity to write his name in gold if he address X, Y, Z. Now, those are not for regime change. Yeah. Those are talking about what this president can do. Absolutely. Right. So this morning I heard about changing the 1999 constitution. Yeah. That, but that has also are, been canvassed by federal lawmakers. Who are you? By federal lawmakers. They've also canvassed for repealing the 1999 constitution. They want us to go to parliamentary system yeah, well, of government. Want, so they can take them together. No, let's just throw to my <laughs> colleagues to continue the conversation. Uh, guys, now, on that one. Uh, let, let my colleagues come in. They will, okay. they will follow up. Ayo. 
All right. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, uh, Terry. And uh, definitely an interesting um, conversation there. Uh, but uh, before we uh, speak to other guests you know, at this point, um, Senator, just a quick one you know, at this point. Um, we know the issues. We know the complaints of Nigerians at this time. But at the end of the day, one government comes in, another uh, goes out, another one comes in. But we still have the same issues, poverty. Poverty just keeps rising you know, in the country with over 60 percent, you know, still poor in Nigeria. We see that inequality gap getting wider. Um, talk to me about what is, what do you think is really driving poverty, you know, up in Nigeria? Okay, thank you. That's a very good question. But I must respond to the issue of demand, right, about reverting to uh, the uh, repealed 1999 constitution. That is not within the competence of the president. Whether it is be push, a lawmaker said so, a non-lawmaker said so. I've had those who say Nigeria should return to regionalism. Is this in the hand of the president, Tinubu, who is elected to and who swore to uphold the constitution of Nigeria to unilaterally decree a new constitution? Do we need 10 days to make that point? Those who have been conversing it have been conversing it in different fora, whether in the symposia, in town hall meetings, or even through the media. Those are legitimate. People have different choices, but we have to have consensus in it. Because this current one, I was still a young man when a military government, a panel so-called Committee of 39 Wise Men, led by the late uh, Timmy the Law, and they gave us a radical departure from parliamentary to presidential. And we were told of all the benefits, and the elite accepted it without question and celebrated it that this is better for Nigeria in the name of national unity. If you want to go back to it, it was not done by an elected president. And the way to amend our constitution is provided for under the constitution. And there is no shortcut to it. Anything you do must be in conformity with the constitution. To do extra constitutional approach it will be just illegal. Now to the last question. That, for me, is at the heart of it. If you follow my, my own contribution on the floor of the Senate, I'm very clear as to my own preferred policy choices. I am not a pro-market guy. I believe that the state, whereas the right-wing economy tells us that the state has no business in business, I believe that the state necessarily must have business, not only in business, it must make effort to regulate the behavior of businesses. Because the private uh, 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 profit motive of a private enterprise does not coincide with the social purpose of government. So government must necessarily put regulations in place to reconcile the, the social purpose of government with the private motive of private enterprise. This is possible. I mean, we have some good models in Scandinavia countries where you can count the number of players, and yet they have a very robust social safety net, right? So for me, we've gone beyond, you know, it's not that free market or this. And when I make those issues, those arguments, just about three weeks ago, I was invited to a talk show, and I spoke about those policies that led to the disappearance of the whole textile industry. It was not by accident. It was the outcome of, in my view, a reckless submission to so-called World Trade Organization rules. And under those rules, the West persuaded us to remove barriers on import, to devalue the Nigeria currency, that that way we will consume less, Nigeria export will be cheaper, and many of us are on record. All right, Even Senator. when a segment of the elite, middle class, and some right-wing economies... Senator, if I, may, if I may come in here... Labor movement, yeah? Senator, sorry, if I may come in here... That cultural did... adjustment program that laid the foundation to where we are today, namely, try to pursue the Naira to achieve its level after using the law to deregulate it. 
And since then, every government has come and found, you know, um, you know, at its own level and so on and so forth. So for me, we must revisit the issue. What are the things that went wrong that Machelin relocated from Nigeria to elsewhere and sit against Nigeria as its main market? I went to organize protests against Dunlop in Ikeja in Lagos. Why did Dunlop close store in Lagos and relocated their factory to another country and they are selling Nigeria remain their major market? I believe that we must revisit those tools. This will not be achieved by the market. This has to be a conscious decision of government to say, Mr. Tire Makers, if you must continue to sell tires in Nigeria, I'm giving you this period of time, you relocate. Here, yeah, we give you state guarantee. Those are the areas where the state, that's why I say you can't say the state has no business in business. The private sector, by the logic of location, may not find Nigeria most attractive. But our most attraction, important attraction, which nobody can take away, what makes us the giant of Africa? is if not the else, our huge population, including these youths, because they have the energy to produce goods and services. And these jobs are not going to come from the banking sector. They will come from services. They will come from the oil sector. They have to come from what I call labor-intensive industries. If Nigeria was to wear 50% of what we wear in Nigeria is made in Nigeria, more than 10 million Nigerians would be employed. If all the tires in Nigeria, 50% are manufactured, it was done before, so we are not going to reverse the wheel. More than 1, 2 million Nigerians will be employed in petrochemical industries. If Nigeria returned to ensuring that we produce what we eat, and I was happy this morning seeing Governor Suludo, rather than commissioning distribution of rice, he was... Uh, he went to one agricultural area and told another people, let's plant food for us to eat rather than just import the rice. I see people commissioning rice distribution. It's okay, but in the long run, that itself can destroy rural economy because we must encourage our farmers to farm. So for me, if, if I summarize, we have to have a delicate balance between liberal economy principles and a level of state intervention. You can see the needless debate in NMPC that somebody could face the camera and say he wants competition by importing poisonous foil to compete in Nigeria with Nigeria refinery without minding the consequences of jobs. I don't care about other politics, but I care about the policy of job creation, job retention, and decent wages. Because there is no way to fight the poverty that the young people are talking about. They are not asking government to create a long dining table. Create the enablement for us to work. And if we are in a, a mixed economy, including in moving towards the market with private sector as a key engine of growth, then we need to encourage those who are already here to expand and protect attention, I mean, uh, protect basic industries. We should not be afraid to use the word protectionism. We must protect our industries because there are peculiarities here that do not exist elsewhere. In this country, you are paying NEPA bees even when they don't give you power for 24 hours. Local manufacturers have to create their power. The right day, I asked one or two manufacturers. If you ask uh, Boa, you ask Dangote, they will tell you they have to generate the power to run their cement factories and even to run the Dangote uh, factory. Now, you saw a, a Nigerian who is not elected and who is not accountable talking about competition, after he has run down four refineries. And people were like, this is a matter between, Dago. no, 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 for me it's about Nigeria. And that is why I said, in one occasion I was angry, I said, these guys who are my jobs, if we don't hack them, they will hang us. And those young men who are protesting, if they have jobs in the textile factories, they have jobs in leather industries, they have jobs in Machelin, they have jobs in Dolor that have been taken away, even, I think, a, a good segment of all the, the industries in, a, in a Ikeja, they are now warehouses. If they return back to being, I mean, the warehouses are now uh, churches. If they return back to production. Okay, Senator. Those energy people who want to spend for 10 days, they will create jobs. All right, Senator. For me, but this will not happen by the logic of the market. Because don't forget, sir, just lastly, how President Obama, when capitalism went into crisis in U.S., 
President Obama used state funds to support General Motors, to support General Chemicals in U.S. It was not the IMF, it was not the, Bank, uh, the World Bank, it was the state. And that is uh, the world's most potent capitalist economy. So we can't pretend. And the subsidy that I want this government to provide, which is already provided, but we need to do more, I will not rather subsidize uh, to import rice, but we have to do that in the short run because government must be seen to be responsive. But in the long run, if those subsidies are accessibly applied to the real farmers that are so solid to try to put to work in Anambra this morning, I'll take you to your channel too, that for me is the way to go. We must create some level of prosperity in our area, area in our rural areas, so that we can halt and reduce rural urban migration. We must return to that era when uh, government says, go back to farm. School to farm policy. We have to return to those. But this cannot be achieved through protest, I'm afraid. The point has been made, and I'm sure President Tinubu listens very well. And more than anyone else, he is more concerned about the unintended consequences of some of the reforms he has introduced. For example, I am not a fan of the market, but I also don't believe that we should have a banking policy, a monetary policy that allows two, three, four, five major banks to collect huge hundreds of millions of dollars at official rate and they go and sell it in the manner that they were doing and make what we now, this government has come to tag, uh, what is it now, excessive profit. And the president now have the courage to appropriate some of those excessive tax, I mean a, a profit, which is not as a result of proper banking. That for me is courage. Now, the new CBN in pursuing certain policies to ensure that nobody make money by just being afraid of the bank, which he himself could have benefited from. President Bola Metinubu asked him to ensure that nobody make money from Forex, just become a billionaire because he's close to the president or because he's close to CBN. He could have decided to continue with where Mayfield left it. And so this is a good policy. However, it has its own side effect. And that is why I said in, in summary that when the president has rolled out a number of policies, for the first time, we are now returning back. Not new, but it was there before, but over time, it faded off. Giving poor people loan. It is done in every, even in advanced countries. American grad student loan, UK grad student loan, even some socialist country grad student loan. He has now started it. I guess with the benefit of data and some learning curve, they will improve on it. So no Nigeria child will be denied the right to pursue and acquire those skills. Because in my union studies, sir, I'm told, and it is true, sociology tells us, everyone that God created, God is so gracious that he gave everybody at least two hands. If you, don't have, if you have less than two, you are considered as physically challenged. Those two hands, if properly skilled, can feed more than one mouth. But when those hands are not right. skilled, and it, I don't know, maybe with time, when we're out of this station, there will be evaluation. Okay, Senator, be, be, because of time. Particular pattern. Because of time, Senator. Those who were carrying, no, no, last one, sir, last one, sir. Those who were carrying sticks in some part of the country, carrying sticks, compared them to those who were carrying placards. You know the difference? Those carrying placards can read, we are hungry. In, for those who had not had the benefit of going to school, for no fault of theirs, they can only carry stick. And what can they do with stick? Violence. And when you call them miscreants, hoodlums, I do not agree. Because when I was NSC president, I argued, and even now, I am more convinced about it. Because I've been a governor, I know what can be done to bail people out of being hoodlums. Nobody was born a hoodlum. Nobody was born a newscaster. Nobody was born a... A, a, a senator, it is society. When you are denied the opportunity, if I were denied the opportunity to go to school, I would be here. My father was too poor to pay school fees for me. And if I had a school without a competent, qualified teacher, I would be able to express myself. So we have to go back to the root, but this cannot be achieved by one day. Lastly, sir, I think what I think this government should do, and I saw many of your competitors say so yesterday, I'm sorry to take some time. 
is that it had done so much by way of what say what can the president do now 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 the president has given state governors for example this last month about 400 or something billion which no state collected less than 10 billion naira some government at 10 billion naira grant in addition to the fact that when i was governor the revenue of Edo state for example i wasn't getting more than 3 billion 3.2 billion last month my governor got a level point, I think the month before, a level point six, last one about a level point one billion. Plus those grants. And then the Minister of Agriculture said 20 trucks of rice. Now I saw yesterday, I think if we on your channel or in Arise television, that rather than give out this rice, this rice will be rebagged, put in a dusty government name in it. And they will not be distributed. The people discovered it and they democratized the distribution. All right. Who call it looting? I okay, said, no, Senator, it's not, I know it's we, we have issues it. when it comes to uh, palliatives. The people take it. There is nothing looting about it. Because it is meant for the people. And I saw the donations. Yes. And this is heartbreaking. That Dagote okay. Foundation, as part of its own company social responsibility, gave about 30,000 bars of right to a state government. And I saw in those uh, democratized distribution by the people that those rights where the Dangote labor was be covered with the Edo State government. Well, the Dangote intention is not to do it in the name of the government, because it's not a government. Now, when you have governors, some governors behaving like that. So we have to... All right. One of the things I told the Minister of Finance last time is that it should publish every month in major newspapers, okay. on television, what goes to each state, what goes to each local government, so that people don't just look at Abuja. So much money President Tinubu has given in the name of palliatives through state government. Well, I shall get this time. He had what he called presidential liaison officer. All right, Senator. But we if the palliatives, that, if the palliatives are not working, maybe you know we should look for another you know workable solution at this point because we, we keep hearing the same stories about you know palliatives not reaching you know the the, the right people. But you did uh, mention uh, you commended the courage. Uh, of President Tinubu uh, for imposing that uh, windfall tax on uh, most of these banks, you know, that profited from um, the uh, Naira devaluation. So um, talk to me about where you would also like to see the president, you know, channel uh, this same courage, you know, to other, you know, segments that are, can actually bring soccer to the Nigerian people. Because at the end of the day, the, the protest is about hunger. How can we get more people, as many as possible, out of poverty, you know, at this time, so that we can have a country where we have the likes of, like in America, I see the likes of Tesla paying incredible amounts as tax, you know, to the government. So a country where that prospers, you know, where everyone can prosper at the same time and we reduce inequality. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm very happy about this question. I built my house in Abuja as a worker because the government directed the banks that they must lend to housing unit. So one of the basic indicators of a poor man, as Gaddafi said, no man is free unless you have your own house. I think we need to impose more control on the banking system to truly do proper banking. Now, this is the only country where banks don't lend, they pick deposit, they just patronize the forest, but that is now who feel with the new policy of the CBA, which, as I said, I agree with totally, things will come to change. I also believe that the president will have to encourage the Minister of Industry to invite, for example, major car manufacturing. We, there are things we don't need to reinvent, we just need to revert back to where we are coming from. So policy that says, you want to sell motor vehicles in Lagos, Mr. Volkswagen, it was then popular in Nigeria, they located in, in, uh, somewhere in Lagos. Mr. Pujo, Pujo was 404405 GL 505, relocated to Nigeria to take advantage of the Nigeria market. I would like to see going forward a new industrial policy, but we say to Toyota, you are now the new darlings of Nigerians. We are the largest Toyota Kozumi country in Africa. If you still want to continue to sell here, I am going to give you S number of uh, one or two years. I will give you guarantees. 
set up your manufacturing plant, whatever supplies you need, whatever guarantees you need, including power, we can have a dedicated power supply, and you produce Toyota in Nigeria. So that the huge transfers arising from our patronage of foreign cars. But right away, one of the things I think the president has to do, having had the courage, huge courage, to do some of the things he had, including the courage to get those banks to you, uh, you use the right word, withfall. Some of the people will turn the other way. They've been making this withfall over the years, and they have never accounted for it. This president has made them to account for it. I will then proceed to say, anybody who wants to do major business in Nigeria, once you get here, WTO, we, you are there. Yep. When we arrive, we cannot be a member of a trading club okay. where we have nothing to sell. And the existing manufacturing industries mm. must be given the protection they need. Of course, the West will say no protectionism. But look at how America erected 100% duty on cars made in China. If that is not protectionism, I don't, I don't know what it is. So if America cannot afford free market, Nigeria should not print. I think at this hour, oh. if immediate lesson that I think we all can do is to say, mm. okay, the part of the consequences of Maji, the dual exchange rate, is the current exchange rate, which obviously have a part on goods and services. Mm. How do you stabilize the Naira? Yeah. In my view, you can do yeah. so now by saying, all that is emergency. Mm. All big vehicles. Senator, Senator we're, we're, all luxurious <laughs> goods. Please I bear with us. We're, we're almost out of time it now. It let's, so that the let's, fiscal let's, authorities have to do that. That is not by the CPA now. Senator Shumbule, and let's... And for one year, no new, car, no new big car is coming to the country. Beautiful. And we save that money. Beautiful. And stabilize so, in Ireland. So at the end of the day, it's, yeah. the, it's largely the responsibility of parliament to really oversight some of these things you've uh, talked about. But I'd, I'd like to take you up on this issue of how state governments respond to their people and the um, politics and relationship basically between the federal and state government and how it translates to development for the people. You had talked about the monies that were given to state governors and you had also raised the issue of a dose state, which I know you're very particular about. But, my state. Exactly. But the, with the issue of a dose state, it would seem that the government, before even the federal government started issuing palliatives, had already started its own palliatives. Like? So the 500 million naira at uh, about a month ago, which the government, you know, put out there to give at least 20, 20,000 naira. You know, my ap appeal to you, because you have a huge reputation behind you, that channels, and even you as a reporter, you be in the system is don't be carried away by pronouncements. This morning, I just saw a post from Edo North, which is my senatorial zone, inviting Governor Basaki to account for 4.5 billion he appropriated to build a modern park at Abjili. That page you have uh, Ramat, uh, Muhammad, Muhammad Ramat Mosque, because it has become a major cap uh, trucking area and they also block the road. And Lade Blake, he said, I'm going to build a model pass so that these trailers can move there. Money is appropriated. It is spent. The job is not on. Now, at uh, somewhere in Sobe, he took about 10 or 20 billion naira in the name of agriculture. And you go to Sobe. Don't take it from me. Mm. Let your cameraman go to Sobe and ask that they be taken to the farm. Mm. And you find that the money is not there. So don't ever be carried away by I'll give it 20,000. This president, President Bola Metinubu, has done a number of things. Wait, Besides wait. giving rise to states. Senator Shamalek. Wait, wait, wait. Which, wait, wait, which, wait. Many, no, no, which many say right. is insufficient. There was something by the way. you said. You made some claims, really, that we cannot be substantiated just like, now about the Edo State Governor. You said that the palliatives that were given, they removed it and they put it in the name of the Edo State Governor. Can you substantiate this claim? I watch that it you're on making? China television. I watch it on Arise television. You, you, watched the where they, you watched where they were removing the names and putting uh, yes, government. Yes, you even saw the bagging machine yesterday. And I know tell your channel. I, I recall the, 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 let him, well, let yeah, but the Edo State Government has job. said, but the Edo State Government. They said they don't have a warehouse. They have the, that quantity of rice found its way to a private residence. How? So it's more of your word against him. No, 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 exactly. my word. It is. It's your word against him. No, no, no. You know what? Well, let's, let's move on to something <laughs> No, 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 no. Don't put it's it on me. 
I watch it from China. If China is a purveyor of fake news, China did not allude it to the Edo State government. You alluded I mean, it to who? China reported what was said. They did not allude it to the no, state. By who? The for what we saw on ground. How did I see the visual? I didn't go to Edo. I saw the visual. I mean, Senator it's interesting that see you brought that the political I saw angle into yeah, it. I think it's surprising that yeah, I saw, that. Because what we're, what we're here and to I talk about. I saw the bagging. Mr. Uh, yesterday, Senator, you reported that the house had been vandalized. Senator, I watch it. What we, yes, what, we, it's interesting that you brought, uh, you turned this into a, poli a place no, where no, you no, can no, ventilate no, no. You politically. You asked me about the government. No, you, you, you started, you started it by attacking the other state government. Excuse me. I just told you at the beginning what I saw Sulu do, and I said that was for me the way to go. And that is this morning. Even in the midst of this crisis, it's not carried away. Mm. He said, look, my people, the long-time solution to food mm. is that we must go back to the land and farm what we eat. Let me, I, I said that is a long, sustainable policy. Not only it will, and I saw it on young people participating. I saw them using manual way to cut grass and all that, the way we used to do it. Because for you me, see, this and conversation for me, that is, is a long about, way to go. And I said, I will protest. prefer. And this protest is about the Nigerian people and the fact that they are angry. One yeah. of the questions that I wanted you to be able to answer before you leave this place is that is with this administration. We saw answers <coughs> under the Buhari administration. Didn't it come to the mind? You saw of, Save Nigeria under the Junata administration. We saw Save Nigeria under... So mm -hmm. didn't it come to the mind of the Tinubu administration that they might have to face this sort of situation? Would you say this administration was prepared for this scenario that we're facing right now? What I think the administration was not prepared for is a situation where people expect miracles in policy changes that require long-term gestation period. It is not for nothing that an elected government has a defined mandate of four years. Now, to ask Tinubu's government to wonder why in one quarter of the four years, that is one year, that it should have solved all the problems, and if he didn't introduce new tools, business as usual, then why did he... What was his business coming from his comfort zone to an office that everybody would be thrown soon at him? So I am saying, I am convinced from the bottom of my heart, and nobody can call me a stooge. Because if people have come to tell the president, look, the way Comrie talk in the Senate, mm. nobody knows whether it's opposition or it's so, but I'll, My I'll first tell... reality is to Nigeria. I believe That's that beautiful, he has But I think it's sad that you brought in politics. Senator, Senator Shomole, we have to really wrap up. Good thing That's that right. you brought in the Senate. I wish we didn't go into the politics of this thing, but let's talk about the Senate just in a but minute. This is political. Let's no, no, I mean, politics is, a, I'm sorry, protest is uh, a freedom of expression to convey the, in, 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 that poli in, that process in 30 political. seconds i want to get your opinion on this yeah there are calls for scrapping of the senate and there are calls for perhaps rejigging the national assembly and the concern is parliament acts like it does not owe the people anything some people have questioned how it is where in the world does parliament pass a bill through first second and third reading in one hour that's how the country's national anthem was changed without consulting the people as well. During the protest, you saw the people singing the old national anthem. Well, whatever anybody wants as a Democrat, because even when I was NSC president, and I have also told my colleagues in the NFC, try to be more proactive, right? I led people to question some policies of the National Assembly when I was NSC president. So, um, whatever anybody want, whatever anybody want, that is within the purview of the National Assembly, let them bring it. For example, the minimum wage law you talk about was passed in one day. You have quarrel with that? Mm. Then there was a supplementary appropriation yes. arising from this windfall. Mm. I praise the courage of the president. We're out of time. We are out of time. To, we wish we had more time. We're out of time, Senator. <laughs> but, but you have also seen me on the floor. I'm sure, I'm sure at some point law, we may be able to have more conversations with you, but Very we good. are out of time right now. Thank I'm you so ready, much. Let's have this conversation. Thank because you so I much, Senator why would you, would you Adam Sushomale, for being with us here on the program. Thank you so much for making time. And we will be having this conversation with you much later. But we do have to wrap up now. Thank you all so much for being with us on the program.